The title of this video is What Do I Do With My Hands and Five Other Tips to Help You Survive Cuddle Parties. All right, so first off, who am I? I am Sean Coleman of Touchpoints Cuddles and Community, and I have attended more cuddle parties than I can count. I have um, attended, I don't know, dozens and dozens and dozens as a participant, and I have co-facilitated uh, events over several years, and um, cuddle parties specifically, and I also have, um, like assisted with several, you know, like getting the door and things like that. And for the last probably three and a half, um, probably like four years or so, I have been uh, throwing my own events that I call cuddle up events that uh, follow the cuddle party agreements, but have some tweaks to better serve the community that I um, tend to work with. All right, so let's get started. So first off, as promised, I am going to tell you what to do with your hands. Seems like kind of a silly thing to address, but it's important, right? You need to know like, what do I do with my hands? It can get awkward. So first off, um, I will highly recommend that you try doing some hand holding. Just some simple old fashioned hand holding. And you know, you can do like that simple kind like this that a lot of folks do now as we're real full grown adults. Um, you also could go back to the childlike lacing that a lot of us did when we were kids, when we were holding hands with our parents or with good friends. You know, it can be fun to lace. It can feel like a little bit closer, a little more intimate. So I'm personally a fan of it, but like do what feels comfortable for you in terms of the type of hand holding and what feels okay for the person that you're holding hands with because consent is a very big part of the agreements for these events. All right, so once you are holding hands with someone, it generally makes things a little bit easier and sometimes a lot easier. You may start to feel the oxytocin kick in and that just sends signals to your body telling you to relax, telling you that you're safe, that you can be calm here. And that's like a huge hurdle that you jumped over at that point when your body is at a place of wanting to relax and be calm. So yay for holding hands. Um, and in, in terms of other things that you might want to do with your hands. So um, when you are um, perhaps spooning or snuggling up really close to someone, then I also still recommend like wrapping your arm around and holding hands again, because that's just another contact point that you can then have with the person. Um, it might not work out depending on how your bodies end up lining up, but if that's an option, I highly recommend throwing that out there and seeing if your cuddle partner, partner is on board with that. Or perhaps cuddle partners, if you're lucky enough to have several people who you are cuddling up with and that's your thing. Cool. Um, in addition to the hand holding, I also highly recommend like head scratches. They're just like a nice way of connecting with someone, feeling really close. For a lot of people, um, like stuff around their heads and their faces are really intimate. So that might mean that they're not into it, but it also generally means that if they are into it and you are able to connect in that way, then it's going to be a deep and richer connection because um, you've gotten over that that barrier or that potential like boundary um, that might have, have been there in the past. And so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so other things to know, in addition to hand holding, there's lots of other stuff going on besides, sorry, besides what to do with your hands. Um, and I have like a list down here, so you may see me looking down for a second. So um, yeah, what to wear. If you've been watching a bunch of videos on cuddle parties, in like, especially like the ones that like, the, that are on the news and stuff like that, then you've probably seen a bunch of people in onesies and brightly colored pajamas, um, like gently moaning and sighing and all of that. And like, all of that is cute. Like, I'm not saying that it's not, it can be really, really sweet. I'm into that shit. But also, that does not have to be your cuddle party experience. Please know that. So if you're into onesies, if you like already have a onesie and you're like, oh, it's kind of old, um, go out and buy a new onesie. Sure, by all means, do that shit. But please do not feel like you have to go buy a new onesie. 
You absolutely do not need to do that. Furthermore, you don't need to wear a onesie. You don't even need to wear pajamas. Like that's a thing that's often talked about with cuddle parties is that like, oh, you can wear pajamas with your friends. And if you've been looking for a place to wear pajamas, then hey, congratulations, you found one. But if you haven't been looking for that place, just wear what's comfortable for you. You know, gym shorts and a t-shirt works out really well. Um, you know, yoga pants and a tank top, that works good too. You know, like check for the agreements at whatever party that you're going to. There might be specific agreements around um, the minimum amount of clothing that you can wear. But beyond that, just wear what's comfy. You know, I highly recommend things that are that are soft because most of us like to feel soft things, you know? We like to feel like fleece and cotton and things like that. Um, that said, if you are a person who generally only ever leaves your house when you are wearing jeans, well, you gotta leave your house to get to the cuddle party unless you happen to be hosting already. So if that's the case, you have to leave your house, then, you, you know, wear jeans. Like, it's okay. If that's what you need to wear, wear them. That's totally fine. You can also change when you get here so you don't have to um, ride the train or, you know, commute on the expressway wearing your onesie or footy pajamas either. So keep that in mind as well, that you have options, you're a choice. I can pretty much guarantee you won't be the only person who doesn't wear a onesie. And if you're super into wearing onesies or pajamas, you probably won't be the only person with pajamas either. So, you know, do you express your own style with that. It's all good. Um, what else? Um, yeah. Think about an intention. So yeah, you may want to think about an intention prior to attending the event and that way you get to get more out of it. You know, you might be able to experience more by um, having an intention, such as you might decide that, you know, you've had like, um, a lot, done a lot of lifting this week. Maybe you had to move a lot of things. You might want a shoulder massage or arm massage that might be comfortable, comforting for you. Um, or you uh, might like really want to practice your boundaries. And so saying no in a firm way might be your objective for this event. So, you know, go in kind of knowing that and think of some ways that you can practice saying no. Maybe say no in the mirror a few times before you get to the event. And that way you can practice and get more out of it, um, you know, knowing what it is that you want to gain. Not saying that the event has to be a failure if you don't do that thing, um, but I'm saying that this is a way that you could potentially unlock even more for yourself at the event. So something to think about. All right. Number four, arrive. No. Yeah, four. <laughs> I forgot how to count for a second. Arrive early. Um, I highly recommend arriving early. When I say early, I don't mean like before the time that's posted. I mean, if they say that the door is open at 645, then show up at like, you know, 646, 650, somewhere around that in the first few minutes um, when the door is open. And that way you'll have plenty of time to get settled as other folks arrived. Uh, you know, you can get a cup of tea if you want, find out where the restroom is and go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, and then find like a good comfortable chair for yourself or a, a comfy place to lay, um, find like the good pillow or whatever, you know, or if you did decide to, um, to buy that new onesie, then you can go ahead and change into the onesie. You don't want to feel rushed um, because the introductions and agreements are about to start when you arrive. So think about that, you know, just allowing yourself that time. Additionally, it might feel kind of nice to have people slowly arrive um, as you are already there and settled. And that way you can meet people like one at a time or a few people at a time instead of like walking in like seconds before the event's about to like officially start with the um, agreements or the, I'm sorry, the uh, intros and welcome circle and like feeling like rushed and feeling like you're walking into an established group, you know? Um, if you are running late, like that's okay, it happens. But I'm just saying this is a tip that could potentially help you in terms of feeling more comfortable and at ease at the event. Um, number five, um, bring a hearty snack. 
So bring a hearty snack to share uh, because you might get hungry. These events are usually several hours long and it's nice to know that you have like a snack there that you definitely like and that you enjoy. And if you are a person who's like on a specific diet that, you know, that goes with that, that a lot that are that, you know, maybe you have some allergies, you don't have to worry about whether or not there's going to be something there that you can eat. You know, for sure, there's going to be something because you brought a hearty snack. Also, um, if you bring something that's yummy to some or that people want to try, then it can um, offer you a great conversation piece. People might want to know, you know, who made the awesome lentil soup or who, um, you know, brought the Halloween Oreos or whatever. And it lets you talk to people and get chatting and, you know, allow you to form some connections with folks. So that's fun. That makes the cuddling a little bit easier. Um... And that brings us to number six, our final one, which is um, listening for common interests. So when you are in the intros, um, during the intros and during the welcome circle, um, I highly recommend as people are introducing themselves to really listen to their stories and like listen so you can get to know them and definitely listen for things that you find interesting um, and things that you might have in common with folks. That way, um, once you get into the open cuddle time or just like the relaxed, un, um, unfacilitated time, then you have something that you can connect around. You have like an entryway into talking to a person because they mentioned something about Spain and you went to Spain one time with your family. And so you can talk about that, you know, or maybe they mentioned um, a musician that you're really into. And that might be something that you can talk about in terms of their newest album or whatever and your, your feelings around that. So it's just a way to kind of get the ball rolling. And I feel like the conversation starters are really important because it allows you to start connecting with folks. And when you have had a conversation with somebody, Generally speaking, it's a lot easier to approach the idea of cuddling with that person or holding hands with that person or even sitting really close to that person. Um, so yeah, do those things, connect with people, be gentle with yourself. You don't have to do every single thing on this checklist, but this is a good list to get you started thinking about things that might help you to feel more comfortable and more confident throughout the event. All right, I hope that this was helpful. Feel free to comment down below. If you have additional tips and tricks, I would love to hear them and love to pass them on and share them with other folks. I love you bunches. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye.